25th anniversary edition of the Bank of America Racing Challenge culminated on Saturday at Los Alamitos. Coming up, we'll have full coverage of the big races, including the Grade 1 BOA Challenge Championship, the John Deere Juvenile, Attaquan Derby, and Cox Ranch Distance Final. Celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Bank of America Racing Challenge. This is the AQHA Racing Challenge Update, powered by American Quarter Horse Association. Hi, I'm Jim Byers, and welcome to the AQHA Racing Challenge Update. It's our annual recap of Championships Night, this year for the 12th time at Los Alamitos in Southern California. In order to make one of the five division finals, all of which are graded, horses had to qualify in regional challenges spread across many months and four countries. We'll show you how the top contenders made the championships and how everyone fared. Now we plan to have five races for you, but the grade one Distaff Championship had a gate malfunction. Many of the runners did not get a proper start and the race was declared no contest. These are the fillies and mares for that race being led over to the saddling enclosure beforehand. They'll get to do it all again on December 2nd because Los Alamitos and Horsemen agreed to reschedule the race at the same $100,000 purse amount. Let's begin our recap now with two-year-olds. In the grade two, John Deere Juvenile at 350 yards. The seven to five favorite, KR High Five, entered on a three-race win streak, all since a fourth place finish in the John Deere Los Alamitos Regional Challenge. This Colorado bred has been improving steadily this fall for trainer Jaime Gomez, and most recently took the Wild West Futurity over the local strip. Making her local debut is Mag Helene for trainer Jason Olmstead. Based in the Midwest, she was a sharp runner-up in the Prairie Meadows Challenge. Christian Escada is in for the ride. Well backed at 8-5 is Jess Sendit. She earned her way to the final with a close second in the Sandy Downs Challenge in Idaho. This Paul Jones filly also exits the Wild West Futurity, but encountered serious trouble at the start. And away they go. And a good start for Alice in Wonderland and KR High Five and Singles Cruise. And Just Send is now trying to rally on, and so is Stevie B. Flash of cash to the extreme outside us. Alice in Wonderland and Singles Cruise, but KR High Five is now coming in fast. Here comes KR High Five, winner of the Wild West Futurity, to take the John Deere Juvenile Challenge Championship. The improvement continues for KR High Five. This makes four in a row. And now the Colorado bred gelding by Five Bar Cartel is a graded winner. Jose Nicasio, the jockey. Trained by Jaime Gomez, KR High Five improves to five for eight lifetime for owner breeders Dave and Sally Kidd, who also raced the dam, IB Field. Afterward, Dave Kidd attributed the success to good fortune. We're just lucky. We are just lucky. We've been at this for 42 years and finally have a horse that can show some potential. So tough field, but we're so lucky. KR High Five wins the John Deere Juvenile in 17.67 seconds. Stevie B flash of cash is second with a show dead heat between Just Send It and Alice in Wonderland. If I could tell my horse one thing, you show me what it is to dream. And because of you, I've known what it's like to realize those dreams. You gave me the confidence to see I was capable of the best. And you proved to me that hard work really does pay off. You're not just my horse, you're my family. I may hold the reins, but you hold my heart. The Cox Ranch Distance Championship has had a pair of two-time winners, Speedy Lunch in 1993 and 94, and Sign of Lanty in 2000 and 2001. On Saturday, Rare Ed tried to become a repeat winner of the 870-yard race, but in his case, the wins would not have been in back-to-back -back years, as he took this grade one back in 2016. He was a long shot on Saturday, though, as New Mexico invader Mahoney and Tackleberry was a heavy 3-10 favorite. A recent arrival in the Christopher O'Dell stable, this Utah bred has spent much of his career in the land of enchantment, winning 8 of 21 starts overall. His ticket to Los Alamitos came through a runner-up finish in July at Albuquerque Downs. Rare Ed is in this race for the third straight year. After winning it in 2016, the Illinois bred followed with a third last year at Prairie Meadows. Now trained by Ricardo Guillen, Rare Ed is a well-traveled seven-year-old 
who qualified with a narrow win back in April at Turf Paradise over his sometime rival Mickey Ward. No stranger to the BOA Racing Challenge program, Mickey Ward has won three challenge races in his career but is seeking his first win on championships night. He's 3-1 from the outside under Jorge Martin Bordier. And away they go. Mahoney and Tackleberry stumble badly at the starts all the way back at last. Mickey Ward's intent on opening a big lead on Martin Bordier, sending him along. He's three lengths in front from a mirror icon. Glittering blue from down along the inside and three horses wide on the outside as he's a buggin'. Now trying to make up ground after that horrible start. Mahoney and Tackleberry and back at the end is Glittering Blue. Mickey Ward takes him around the far turn and Mickey Ward's opened up a four length lead. He's going along strongly. Rare Ed now begins to close in and Rare Ed's cut the gap to three lengths from down along the inside. Back in third is Amir Icon as Mickey Ward drifts out. But Mickey Ward is still well clear here with his 16th to go. Trying to close in as Amir Icon from out of the back of the pack, but it's going to be Mickey Ward, Martin Fortier, Rare Ed's coming in fast down along the inside. Mickey Ward just got to the wire in time to win the Cox France Distance Challenge. Mickey Ward holds on, but let's go back to the start. The favorite Mahoney and Tackleberry loses all chance with a bad stumble, is relegated to last, and winds up running fourth. Mickey Ward and Rare Ed put on quite a show through the stretch, with Mickey Ward holding on by a head. Well back in third was a mere icon. Trained by Matt Fales for his parents, Carolyn and Ralph, Mickey Ward wins his first graded race at the age of seven. He's an Arizona bred son of FDD Dynasty and the mayor of mere formality. Jorge Martin Bordier, the jockey. Matt Fales also recognized his opponent, drawing a comparison to his horse's namesake, boxer Mickey Ward. I have a tremendous amount of respect for Rare Ed and his connections. He's a very tough competitor, almost like uh, when Mickey Ward, the boxer, had his rivalry with Arturo Gatti. You know, they're kind of the same, but uh, tonight was our night, and uh, Martin put a tremendous ride and uh, just on top of the world right now. When he opened up that big lead on the back stretch and even had a pretty substantial lead coming for home, uh, did you feel confident or did you anticipate it was going to end up closer? Uh, no, I was very unsettled uh, coming down the lane. I knew that Rare Ed was going to unleash a big run and uh, I had my, my, I was holding my breath the whole way. It certainly was not for sure we were going to win it until they hit the wire. He broke like a rocket. I mean, he was gone from the way go. It just was a matter of a time, you know, how soon we were going to get to the wire. <laughs> now, these two have had nice matchups before. Rare Ed caught them in the race at Turf Paradise, but uh, were you pretty confident uh, when you hit the wire that you had won it? When we hit the wire, yes. But the last 50 yards, you know, I mean, he was, he made up way too much ground. I mean, just yeah. scary enough. <laughs> Lightly raced for his age, Mickey Ward is now 7 for 21. The time for the Cox Ranch Distance Championship, 45.538 seconds. On paper and at post time, the Attaquan Derby Championship looked like the most wide open race of the night. Three-year-olds go 400 yards in this grade three. Two to one favorite Walcott has won four straight. Trials and finals for the Mile High and Altoona Derbies. An Oklahoma bred who started only once as a two-year-old Walcott has blossomed in 2018 with five wins and nine tries. His earnings of nearly $94,000 are third most in the field. Painted Dynasty ran away with the Prairie Meadows Challenge in September to put her in this lineup. Campaigned by the challenge's leading owner this year, Thomas J. Sheckle, she's a long shot at 16 to one. Five to two second choice is SC Vapor Trail. This daughter of multiple grade one winning mare Spit Curl Diva has more than $110,000 in earnings. Another with some support at 5-1 to one is Mia Moore Secreto, a Texas bred making his first start on the West Coast. He's had a good year, winning three of six with two seconds. He qualified by winning the definitive challenge race at Ruidoso Downs in July. Second that day was Corona Ranger, who broke from the 10 hole on Saturday. And away they go. A beautiful start here for SC Vapor Trail down the middle part of the track and also Painted Dynasty came away well. Corona Ranger, but Mia Moore Secreto now begins to stride on power players. Mia Moore Secreto to the extreme outside, tries to come in as Painted Dynasty and Corona Ranger to the extreme outside. Here comes Corona Ranger, the wind going away. A strong late bid by Corona Ranger puts this Oklahoma bred son of Corona Cartel into the winner's circle under Augustine Silva. Bred by Bolenbach Farm. And purchased as a yearling for $40,000, Corona Ranger is out of the mare Azum Babe, who also produced grade one winner Valiant Rogue. 
Corona Ranger is owned by Vanessa Bartu and trained by John Steinbo, who didn't like his post position, but enjoyed just about everything else about the win. The horse runs good, fresh. You know, we ran him out here the other day, and he had a, a, a good trip, not a great trip. Good horse, and obviously likes it here, ran well. Ramon has done a great job with him, so I was extremely pleased. I hate the 10 hole. What kind of a journey did he have from the outside? A, a perfect, perfect trip. Everything he wanted other than Augustine threw his whip away when he tried to switch. <laughs> Corona Ranger beats Mia Moore Secreto with Painted Dynasty third. The winner's time, 19.752 seconds. Coming up, the Bank of America Challenge Championship right after this. If I could tell my horse one thing, I would tell her, you're my daughter's BFF. You are her quiet time, her free time. I love the way she looks in your eyes and kisses on you every day. She's learned that you are more than just an animal. You are her everything. You hold her heart and you hold mine when you hold her. The Grade 1 Bank of America Challenge Championship has been the headline race throughout the quarter century of this program, and many of the winners have been among the biggest names in the sport. This year's field for the 440-yard test figured to offer more of the same, containing the reigning three-year-old champion and one of the best older horses over the past three seasons. We begin with an intriguing arrival from Brazil, Corona Jump Him MRL. He took the challenge race in his native land and shipped to Los Al, eventually going to trainer Paul Jones. The top three wagering choices in the BOA final all hit the board in the Grade 3 Los Alamitos Championship Challenge in August. BH Lisa's boy, Hold Air Hostage, and Katie's Easy Moves. Katie's Easy Moves followed that effort with a strong fourth after a quick start in the Robert L. Boniface Los Alamitos Invitational. Trained by Mania Rosa, Katie's Easy Moves is a Utah bred with 13 career wins. He's 3-1 with Eduardo Nicasio. 2017 three-year-old champion Hold Air Hostage has taken on the best at Los Alamitos after shipping from Remington Park in June. Now trained by Jaime Gomez, last year's Rainbow and All-American Derby winner is the 7-5 favorite from Post 11. After a thrilling rally in the Los Al Challenge and a subpar effort from an undesirable post in the Boniface, B.H. Lisa's boy entered the championship with high hopes from owner trainer Bill Hoberg, a multiple grade one winner who clearly loves the Los Al strip. B.H. Lisa's boy is 5-2 from post four. And away they go on the Bank of America Challenge Championship and Katie's easy moves got off to a good start and hold air hostage to the extreme outside. Cowboy Jim's running a good one down the center part of the track. Cowboy Jim looking for a big upset here. Hold air hostage to the extreme outside. Now BH Lisa's boy begins to roll down along the inside. And here comes the class of a true champion. BH Lisa's boy crushes him here. Wins are frequent for BH Lisa's boy, but at least this year most have been by rather narrow margins. Not here as he draws off by a length under comebacking jockey Cesar de Alba to win for the 20th time in 35 starts. Katie's Easy Moves is second with Cowboy Jim third over Hold Air Hostage. The time for BH Lisa's boy, 21.506 seconds. Bred owned and trained by Bill Hoberg. BH Lisa's boy is an Idaho bred six-year-old gelding by Mighty Invictus from the Mare Apollo Snowbound. Hoberg said the start for his horse was much better this time. It was a, a good break for him. You know, he broke with the field and, you know, gave himself a go. Uh, the inside was real clean. Everybody broke straight and, and gave everybody a pretty good chance to get down through there. You've won so many big races, grade ones, et cetera, but this is your first time to win this one. You've tried a couple times before. Uh, how does it feel? This is fun. You know, uh, this was one race that's eluded me for the last 20 years, and uh, it's great to win it. Finally, Cesar de Alba back uh, aboard this horse. Uh, what was it like to have him back? Uh, you know, uh, horse racing's a team sport. You know, and uh, when Cesar wasn't with us, you know, our uh, our point guard was off the court, and now we got him back up. Uh, the team's back together again. De Alba was injured in mid-July and returned in late October, a timeline that allowed him to reunite with one of his best mounts. It was great to be back from injury. Uh, it was. To me, a long three months. Some people think it was a little quick, but I feel good. I'm happy to be back, and being on this horse has just been awesome. It's been a pleasure. Um, he's a pretty professional horse. He just breaks good. You just got to keep on busy, and 
and if uh, it's his day, he'll, he'll come running towards the end. This was a really nice field of horses, and it looked like uh, he did that relatively easily. What was the uh, trip like from your perspective? Yeah, he breaks pretty good, and then and then it takes him a while to get going on, but you have to kind of get after him a little bit. And then he switches to his, to his right lead halfway down through there, and he just explodes. And here comes the class of a true champion, B.H. Lewis Point Fresh in the mirror. So Bank of America Championships night is over for 2018, but still to be run is version two of the grade one distaff on December 2nd, and keep up with Raceview Network for our coverage of that. Next year, the championships go for the first time to Albuquerque Downs. I'm Jim Byers. That's all for now. Thanks for watching not only this recap edition, but any or all of our previous installments of the AQHA Racing Challenge Update.